Hello, testing, testing, one, two, three. Today we're going to have a look at microphones. Um, as usual, there are hundreds and hundreds to choose from. And uh, apart from the standard ones that we use, there are plenty of specialist microphones designed for different jobs. Harmonicas, drums, whatever. Uh, the little lapel ones, violins, all right across the brain, uh, range. Um, in very simple terms, <clears throat> microphones are divided into two categories. They're either a dynamic or a condenser mic. So let's have a look at the ones that um, we will most likely to come across. Um, first of all, though, what is a microphone? Well, it's a type of transducer. It converts air pressure into an electrical current. It's really the reverse of a speaker. A speaker takes the electrical current and turns it into air pressure or sound waves and makes the uh, cones move and the sound comes out. Microphones work the other way around, so the air pressure creates an electrical current. So let's have a look at the dynamic microphones. <coughs> uh, the dynamic microphone um, creates... Uh, the sound waves cause a movement of a thin metallic diaphragm that's attached to a coil of wire and a, a magnet that produces a magnetic field which surrounds the coil. And the motion of this coil uh, within, the, within the field causes a, a current to flow through it. So it looks a bit like this. So you can see here uh, on the right hand side the air makes the diaphragm move up and down and the magnet, magnetic field then creates an electrical current which comes out. So these are dynamic microphones. The most famous of these, of course, is the SM52, the, uh, sorry, the Shaw SM58, uh, which is a, a picture of that here. Um, the SM58 is the go-to vocal microphone for most people. Um, it's incredibly solid. It's a real workhorse. Um, it's great for the um, uh, live environment. It doesn't change with the uh, temperature or humidity. It can handle really loud noises and it's really solid, really hard. Um, this is the sort of thing that Roger Daltrey throws around his head, but that's all taped up, of course. If you hit one of those just to fly off and hit you in the head, cause a lot of damage. So the SM58, uh, the Shaw SM58 is one of many, but of course it's the it's the classic one that everybody goes to, that everybody knows. We use it in the, the jam. Um, so the other type of microphones are condenser microphones. Now condensers work in a slightly different way. Um, there's a diaphragm mounted at the top of the, of the, the, the um, a microphone in front of a metal plate which is charged with a current and this is important and this uh, in effect to get technical creates a capacitor that retains a magnetic field and the movement of the diaphragm creates uh, an electrical current that is then amplified so a condenser would look like this you can see that there there's the diaphragm moving in and out and creating a a, a, a current the drawback with the condenser mic is that it needs external power to be able to create this. And so that can either be in the form of a battery, or more often than not it's something called phantom power, which comes from the amplifier or the mixing desk or a DI box, uh, which provides the power to the microphone. Okay, so don't think you can go out and get a condenser mic and then plug it into an amp because it won't always work if it hasn't got phantom power. So it needs that. Okay. The condensers are a lot less uh, robust than the dyma dynamics and of course they're prone to changes in temperature and they do cost a lot more. Um, they're much more sensitive but they do give a more natural sound and of course they're used a lot in st for studio work and for recording. They can't really be hand held so uh, they're housed in uh, in cradles to stop the vibrations which you can see here. There's a cradle around the microphone that holds it to stop it vibrating. Um, so that's the two types, the condensers and the, the, um, and the dynamics. Now we're going to be connecting these uh, microphones and it's not just any old cable that you want to use. What we want to do is, you, and you may come across this term <coughs> about a balanced mic, 
And that doesn't refer to it being able to stand up on its own without falling down, but it's to do with the signal. It's the way that the mics put out the signal. And the output uh, uh, from the, the microphone goes down two wires. One's positive, one's negative, and they're shielded by a metal cable. Um, there's quite a lot of sort of... Uh, technical stuff involved here but of course uh, let's not bother with all that um, but what it does is that it uh, it re the effect it has is it rejects all the hum and the extraneous noises that, that and it gives a much much cleaner um, sound so these cables are known as XLR cables <coughs> and you'll see that on the bottom of the microphone here there's a three pin socket that plugs in down there, or down there, to that bit, over there, you know, to the XLR cable. Um, X is being the ground that's round around the two other cables, and one is for left and one is for right. And it has a three-pin socket, and you'll find that they have a little clip that holds them in place. So don't just try and pull them out. You have to press the clip to get it to come out. Um, it's always best to have a balanced um, microphone if you can because it just gets rid of all the unwanted noise. XLR cables uh, need to be handled with a bit of care. Don't wrap them up too tightly. Just give them a good wide loop <coughs> uh, uh, because they, they can, um, uh, yeah, can give them problems if the, if the, if the cables get too compressed. Uh, so they're a different form of cable that you will need for your, for your microphone. Um, so the other thing that we need to just talk about is the patterns of a microphone. So <clears throat> um, uh, many people think that if you point your microphone at uh, something, it'll pick up the sound from where you point it. But it's not quite like that. It's, like, it's not like a camera where you point it and it picks up the picture. Um, uh, it's not quite the case. So what you've got is different uh, types of direction that come from uh, different types of microphones, obviously. So uh, let's just uh, have a look at this. So uh, an omnidirectional, omnidirectional microphone is one that picks up the sound from all different angles, uh, and uh, which is fine. And but it isn't really very good as a vocal mic because it picks up everything from all over the place. Um, the unidirectional microphones are the ones that we tend to to use. Um, they tend to be more sensitive to sound coming from in front and from slightly around the side. Uh, these are also known as cardioid mics because it has a heart shape uh, and uh, hence cardiac, hence cardioid. Um, the sensitivity of these microphones tends to be from the front um, uh, and, and so it does cut out the stuff from behind and to a certain extent from around the sides. Um, and these are definitely the ones that we would use uh, as a vocal mic. Um, bi-directional ones, uh, just as, a, as, a, uh, as an aside really, are equally sensitive from the back and from the front. And so they can be used for um, duos or for stereo recordings and things like that. But we don't come across those too much. So it's the cardioid mics that are the ones that we use the most. Okay. Um, I thought I'd just try and give you a, f a couple of examples. <clears throat> this isn't going to be quite as easy, but we'll see <laughs> we'll see how we get on. Okay, I'm going to have to bang my headphones on as well for this bit. So um, I've got here an uh, SM58, which is plugged in, and uh, but not turned on at the moment because we're using the um, the video one at the moment. Uh, but just to give you an idea of the cardioid shape around the microphone where it picks things up uh, rather than me moving which I can't do here I'm going to move the microphone okay so uh, this should give you some sort of idea if I um, turn this on one two one two one two and I've turned down the one uh, here which is doing the recording so you can see that I've got um, uh, you know a pretty good signal here straight in front of me with with the uh, this uh, uh, pointing straight at the mic and this is how you'd be singing normally but if i start if i start to move this away and you'll see um how the sound changes so if i'll just count so it's one two one two one two one two one two one two 
So obviously as we get further away, it disappears. And if you have the microphone at the back, it's not going to pick anything up. But at the sides, it's slightly different. So you can go one, two, 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 one, two. And you can see they're still picking up a little bit off the side. So you can have two voices on either side of one of these doing harmonies or whatever it is, and it'll work fine. So that's the cardioid shape that I showed you before. Okay, so that works uh in, in as a, as a vocal mic it's absolutely superb for that okay let's have a look at the um condenser mic then <clears throat> the one that i use here is uh called an mca sp1 uh it looks like this uh and you can see it's in a cradle uh this was recommended to me by um phil dolman actually a while back um you can get these now for under 100 quid in the in the uk um, this one I think came from America originally, um, but um, it does uh, everything that I need it to do really. Um, it's very sensitive, so um, uh, it's great for doing these um, podcast, you know, the um, online stuff as a as a studio mic, and it's good for recording. It's also good for live situations because you can put it sort of just about halfway, a little bit round your chest height, and it'll pick up a ukulele and your voice at the same time. I've used it quite a lot at the jam. Um, it, it, to give you an idea of its sensitivity, I'm going to move around. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit difficult, but it'll give you an idea. So I can get really in quite close to it. And with a whisper, it's very sensitive. So if I'm a bit further away from it, you'll see I'm straight in front of it now. Uh, and I can go one, two, three, four. And I can move around the side. One, two, three, four. 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 At the top, down the bottom. One, two, three, four. And you can sort of see that there's <coughs> quite a big area around it that still retains its sensitivity. Uh, and you'll see that condenser mics are like that. And if you ever watched uh, someone like Bill Monroe or uh, you know, bluegrass uh, bands, they'll have just one microphone, which is a condenser in the middle. And then they move in and out whenever anybody has a solo, the others move back and they use it almost as a volume control. So they're sensitive enough to do that. But this one just does the job for me. Uh, like I said, it's under 100 quid. You can get some much more expensive ones. And in fact, the studio ones, the professional studio ones, are talk, you know, we're talking thousands of pounds, really. Um, but this sort of uh, uh, does the job, really. So that's the, um, those are the two microphones, the, the, um, the uh, dynamic and the condensers. Uh, just as a few add-ons. Um, you'll notice that uh, uh, some of these microphones have one of these foam rubber doobries around them, uh, which you put on the end there, and uh, uh, as has this one, and that's to really stop the um, the P's and the B's. So when you're singing in a P and a B like that, and it sends out a, a blast of air um, and and hits the microphone, it goes bang, and so the idea is to actually stop that. In in uh, uh, studios, you'd um, you'd have a what's called a pop filter, or windshields, uh, um, which is sort of a nylon mesh that you put in front of the microphone to stop uh, the air uh, passing through and hitting the microphone. Um, in the old days, we used to make these out of wire coat hangers and old sets of pairs of tights, uh, but uh, you can get pick these up for for pretty much nothing now. So they um. <clears throat> they 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 do do the job to stop that p sound so there's that uh a couple of uh do's and don'ts about microphones which are worth uh, noting i think um one is watch out for feedback of course uh, we explained feedback last week but um just to explain it again uh if you talk into a microphone the sound comes out of the speaker at the front if the microphone is too close to the speaker, the microphone will pick up what's coming out of the speaker, go back into the microphone and come back out of the speaker again. And it goes into a loop and that's where you get this horrible feedback and the horrible whines and blows your eardrums out. So uh, as a rule of thumb, always make sure that your um, microphones are behind the speakers. Um, 
the uh, condenser mics are a lot more sensitive, so you have to be a lot more careful with those. Pick it, they'll pick up extraneous sounds from around the sides and from monitors and things like that. So that's, that needs tweaking a little bit if you're playing in a live situation. Uh, the other thing is never blow into a microphone. You know, we know the old, um, you know, the bingo callers. <coughs> they blow, blow into the mics and uh, and uh, uh, call everybody to order. But actually, that's um, a no-no because it'll just ruins the diaphragm. And if you're serious about uh, your um, singing and performing and things like that, I would recommend getting your own microphone. It, these are one of the things you sort of have to do if you're going to be doing it a lot. Um, you don't want to trust to using the microphones that are in a venue or something like that. You don't know who's been singing into it, uh, and you can keep it clean. These all these uh, the SM58s, for example, all come apart, and uh, and you can clean those. So I would um, heartily recommend um, uh, getting your own mic, spending the money on your own mic, and then you go to an open mic and say, "Look, I'm going to use this and plug it in." So, uh, and one that, that, you know, that, that would suit you. So there's that. Um, there's just one other microphone that I thought I'd introduce you to. Of course, it's this one, which is the Elvis Presley microphone. So thank you very much indeed for watching. And uh, this is the Shaw uh, 55SH, which was uh, um, made of course famous by uh, Elvis uh, and uh, Good Morning Vietnam and all that sort of stuff and the Mother Yukas use these as well they have a particular tone to them uh, so and they're great but they weigh a ton they're, <laughs> they're really heavy uh, but they can take a lot of beating so uh, in the words of Elvis Presley thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time uh -huh.